by Catherine G. Claire's Lounge, Thursday evening, North East London, February. Sarah sits on the sofa wearing an outrageous onesie with the hood up. She's on her phone throughout and rarely looks up. Claire sits in a chair, smartly dressed, a small table with snacks, jug of water and glasses. Ooh, well that's a shame. Oh, right, um, Alexa's cancelled. I was looking forward to meeting her. Sorry, sorry, just, just got to send this. We'll have to rearrange the games at the end, but that's fine. Sorry, sorry. Alexa isn't coming now either. Who? Okay. Um, Alexa Cooper? Oh, Alex, yeah, no, we don't call her Alexa anymore. Too confusing. Confusing? You know, Alexa, turn on the lights. Alexa, play back to the 80s radio. Oh, yes, I see. Yes, that would be confusing. Although better than being called Matthew's mummy or Alice's mummy. People seem to forget my name for some reason now that I'm a mum. It, um, it happened at the hospital as soon as the twins were born. The nurses started calling me Ben and Matthew's mummy and it carried on right through NCT and school. Maybe it's because none of us can remember each other's names. Baby brain, I think they call it. Would you like to try the nibbles? Sarah, would you like to try the nibbles? Sarah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> what would we do without our phones? <laughs> yeah. Wasabi bowl? Claire shoves a bowl in Sarah's face, forcing her to look up from her phone. Oh. Thanks. Oh dear. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> they have a bit of a kick, don't they? I, I think you're supposed to eat them in slightly smaller portions. <laughs> oh dear. Um, here, have some water. Claire pours some water, which Sarah sips, but she continues to cough. She decides to go off to the toilet. She leaves her phone, but quickly comes back to get it, coughing all the way, and goes off. Claire answers the door to Emma. Hello, Emma. Come in. Can I take your coat? Nah, you're right. Emma sits down and shrugs off her coat behind her in a messy heap. She's wearing a onesie. Are you putting yours on later? Sorry? Your onesie? We always wear them for book club? Oh, no, um, I don't have one actually. I, I didn't know we were doing that. <laughs> don't worry, I'll text Sarah and ask her to bring her minions one. Sarah's already here actually. Loud Sarah or Sarah with a chin? Because I saw Sarah with a chin at Rugby Tods and she said she'd definitely be here and is bringing two bottles. Um, Sarah Daniels? Um, Loud, Sarah, is in the bathroom, I believe. Too much wasabi. Oh, right. Well, you got her to move away from her phone for two seconds. Bloody miracle. Yes, we had a brief chat. Um, Sarah Taylor emailed to say she's got the flu. Yeah, yeah, that's Sarah at the chin. She's not coming. That's weird, because she looked fine at the park. <laughs> yeah, it's going round, isn't it? My kids have all had it. <laughs> Yes, um, Alexa, um, Alex has cancelled as well. Let's hope the others come soon. I did specifically say 7pm sharp on the invitation. But... Yes, yes, you did. We don't usually do invites. It's more sort of a turn up when you can escape the brats thing, you know. But I really like the invitation, actually. Lovely fonts on it. And laminated, white clean. I like that. Oh, it's encapsulated, actually. People think it's laminated, but... It... It's not the same thing. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd just like to be finished by 8.30 if possible. I really need my sleep at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet you do. How are your twins doing? Are they settling into the new school all right? Got your hands full there with the baby as well. Yes, um, Matthew and Ben are doing well, thank you. Um, I think separate classes were a good idea. Must be hard moving to a new area halfway through the term. Yes, well, um, my husband got transferred here. It was all a bit unexpected. 
He must be busy too, being in the police and all that. Um, yes, yes, he is. Um, Wolfram Forest is much busier than Aberdeen so far. <laughs> Blimey, she's got some lungs on her. Yeah, I think I'd better... Yeah, yeah, go for your life. Claire goes off, the crying continues. Emma looks round the room. She gets her phone out and texts. Help yourself to nibbles, Emma. Oh, great, thanks. Emma sniffs the snacks and decides against eating any. While she's texting, Sarah enters, recording some kind of selfie video on her phone. Hey, guys. So, yeah, it's a no to wasabi balls. They are evil. She sits with her head in her phone with no acknowledgement of Emma practically texts and barely notices Sarah either for a while. Hey Sarah. That's for your Insta. Sorry, sorry. Or for the YouTube channel. Dating profile. I looked at your Instagram, uh, I mean your Insta the other day, and you had over 40,000 views on that period cup post. Those things any good? Yeah, yeah. Uh... No, it's, uh, it's going to take a few goes. Sarah takes a selfie of her cleavage and continues on her phone. Ooh, blimey, that'll spice up the yummy mummy's profile. The boys will love it. Girls. Sorry? Oh, really? I... Uh... Sarah enters. She looks a little dishevelled, baby sick on her top. <sighs> Sorry about that, ladies. No, no, you're right. We've all been there, haven't we, Sarah? Sarah, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Sarah's a single mum. Amazing job. She does works really hard and she's got her own online empire. She's what they call an influencer. Puts bread and butter in little Lola's mouth with all that stuff. So we forgive her for being so bloody antisocial now and again. Wow. <laughs> I see, yes, amazing. Oh, you've got a little bit of, uh, um... Oh, bugger. Sorry, um, I'll go and change. No, 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 don't be silly. It's only us. We're wearing onesies, for goodness sake. <laughs> I'll just quickly change. <laughs> oh, blimey, she wants to be down here with the girls. Here, you go and settle her down. I'll get this party started, shall I? I think you'll be needing it tonight, judging by that little one. Glasses in the kitchen, are they? Emma pours out a bottle of wine. Actually, if you don't mind, we, we don't have alcohol in the house during the week. <laughs> oh, right. It's just, um, you know, it can easily become a weekday habit, and um, I don't think it's the best example for the children. <laughs> oh, right. Just a weekend's day. <sighs> Bloody hell. No wine. At book club. Book club just isn't book club without the wine. I'd better warn Becky, she's going to have a right old hump on. I'm oh. a text furious, and Sarah is also on her phone. Claire enters wearing a different top. <sighs> Sorry about that. She's not sleeping too well. I think it's all the changes. Oh, it's all right, Lauren. You know how it is. I were terrible on ability. I used to put a drop of brandy on spend on me some nights, but you know, just as a last resort. Shall we get started then? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good idea. Claire grabs her book and places it on the table. It's covered in post-it notes inside and out. What did you think of the book? The book, oh yeah, it was brilliant. You liked it? Yeah, very funny. Funny? Well, when I say funny, I don't mean funny, haha, -ha, funny. I mean, <laughs> funny, funny. You know, maybe we should wait for the others to get here. I know they won't want to miss this. Oh, oh God, why can't you give me just one night? I've been looking forward to this all week. It's okay, uh, don't worry. I'm sure she'll go off in a minute. No, she won't. I know that cry. I'd better... Claire goes off. Emma looked at her phone. Um, can I help? Oh, 
I'll get the door, shall I? Emma goes off and quickly comes back on with Becky, dressed in a onesie and carrying a child's sippy cup from which she swigs from. They enter talking. Yes, so it's just you, me, loud Sarah at the moment. I knew Sarah with the chin would bail on us, flew my ass. And I knew the snacks would be rubbish. Sarah with the chin says she only gives those twins quinoa crisps in the lunch boxes. Quinoa? Quinoa? I don't bloody know how you say it. She swigs from the sippy cup, which Emma tries to take away from her. Ooh, can't drink that in here. Didn't you get my text? No. What? Why not? It's book club. Not bloody quinoa club. Oh, hey, Sarah. Sarah. Hi. Yeah, no, she won't want you drinking that. She doesn't like it in the house during the week. What? That's the whole point. Why didn't someone tell her? You can't host book club without wine. And you should have brought a bigger cup and mini cheddars. It's not her fault. She didn't know. Be nice. She's only just moved her and I think she's struggling a bit. Husband's on a lot of nights. We should have just stuck to the normal rotation. I did it last time. Joe did it before Christmas. I reckon it was it was your turn this month then. Yeah, yeah, it was, but Claire volunteered to do it. I was talking to her at school after pick-up and she said she'd always wanted to be part of a book club. And you just let her post it with no training or anything like that. <laughs> training? What sort of training could she possibly need? Well, she sent nice shiny invites. You know, I've never actually had a letter in the post for which wasn't from my bank. Well, some basic snack training wouldn't have gone amiss. Where is she anyway? Her little one is a bit restless in the new house. Look, she really wanted to do it so she could meet everyone outside the school gates. She doesn't know anyone here yet. I only came to see what her house was like. They look around and Becky spots a picture on the wall. <laughs> what does that say there? <laughs> Live, laugh, love. <laughs> More like die, cry, hate with a baby crying like that all night long, poor cow. Have you read the book? What book? The book. The book club book. Oh, no. Why are you asking me that? Because Claire has and she's really excited about it. The reading bit. Do you know there's going to be games? What games? Mm. Must have confused her. Book club. We should have called it something else, like <laughs> onesie club. More like wine club. I better warn you in advance, she's not wearing a onesie. What? No wine and no onesie? I knew I should have listened to Sarah with the chin. Right, I'm off. You're, you're on your own, ladies. What? No, 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 you can't leave. She's really looking forward to the book bit. And she knows you're here now. How does she know I'm here? Tell her it was carol singers or something. Carol singers? This isn't love actually, you know? And it's February. I'll see you tomorrow. No, 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 please don't go. I don't know anything about books. Neither do I. You're a school secretary. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't tend to brush up on the English literature over a cheese sandwich at lunchtime, do I? Oh, cheese. I'd, I'd love some cheese right now. Hashtag me too. Um, you can't use that hashtag about cheese. Not cool. All right, all right, it was just a joke. Me too is not a joke. Right, this is an SOS situation now, girls. We're so delirious from the lack of good snacks that we're arguing about cheese. Sarah, you Google the book, and Emma, you blag it. You're good at that. And I'll just pop home, get some cheese. I've got some really decent, smelly blue stilt left over from Christmas. I've, I've been saving it, but as this is a cheese emergency, I'm prepared to make the sacrifice. I'll be back in 10 minutes, bish bash bosh. No, you won't. <sighs> Do you want some decent snacks or not? <sighs> oh God, stay away from those. They are evil. Right, I'll be back in 10, maximum 30 minutes. No, she might come back and ask me more book questions. We can't Google it because we don't know what the book's called. Please help me. Help me with the book and then you can sneak out for the cheese. God, Emma, you're so dramatic. It's in your book. You owe me a very large drink for this. And cheese. I gave you that Christmas, that gave you that Christmas dolphin, anyway, so we're even. Where's the book? 
we just read the first and last pages. That'll give us an idea. She must have taken it with her. She's probably reading it right now. She's breastfeeding. I mean, who has the time to read anything longer than the Gruffalo? I thought you were going to say, who has time to read anything longer than a text? <laughs> I think Sarah can relate to that. I read. Blogs and blogs. Yeah, we know. Stop you it. You read blogs, you watch them. Stop it. Come on, she'll be back soon. I think we'll really hurt her feelings if she knows we've not read it. Okay, what do we know about the book? Come on, you've seen it at least. What's it called? Um, it was, there's something, uh... That's a good strong start, Emma. Well done. Shh, I'm trying to think. You were there too, Sarah. Didn't you see the cover? It's the, the, I think there was a windmill on the cover. Although it was hard to tell as she had it covered in post-it notes. How does this woman find the time to write post-it notes, let alone read a whole novel? She's twin boys and a newborn. <sighs> Maybe she hasn't read it. Maybe she's double bluffing us. She has definitely read it all right. Will you two please focus? We've got a windmill, right? Wuthering Heights. Is there a windmill in that? Who wrote that again? <coughs> I get them confused. Kate Bush. I remember now, it's Emily Bronte. I hope you were joking. You really do need my help. Mm, no mention of a windmill. Windy moors, but no actual windmill. What else? What else do we know? Um, uh, let me think. It's not funny. No, windmills aren't generally all that funny in my experience. Unless you count the pink windmill in Rod Hull and Emu. But Rod Bats made it totally not funny. No, no, she said the book wasn't funny. Or did she say it was funny? Uh, no, no, I said it was funny and then she looked at me funny. Oh, right then. So we know it's not funny and it's possibly got a windmill in it. Oh, God, I'm bloody starving. How can we think without decent snacks? Eddie uh, eats a handful of wasabi pickies and has a coughing fit. Oh, I told you they're evil. Becky continues think... coughing and drinks from her sippy cup. Emma bangs her on the back and helps her. I thought they were Queen Emma crisps. Claire enters. She's more stained and dishevelled than ever. Her hair has come down and she has a bit of cabbage poking out of her top. Oh, Claire, look who's arrived. <laughs> Hello, Becky, are you all right? Becky continues coughing and beckons Emma to go off with her to the toilet. I think I'd better help her. Oh, yes, yes, go ahead. Emma and Becky go off. Claire sits down defeated. Sarah on her phone. After a while, she looks up. You managed to get her off then? Well done. I knew you would. Are you all right? Look, Lola didn't sleep at all for the first two years of her life. I honestly thought I was losing my mind. It does get better. Well, you knew that with your boys. God, twin boys must have been a handful. Actually, the boys were very calm babies. You know, everyone said it would be carnage and I was fully expecting it, but they were excellent sleepers. It's like Alice is making up for them. Sarah's phone has been pinging away during this and she's half listening and half straining to look at her phone whilst trying to be sympathetic. She's just never satisfied unless she's on the boob. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. Oh, is Lola a hungry girl too? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, uh, she has her hungry moments. I'm just so tired. <laughs> All I seem to talk about is how tired I am. Oh, I used to be fun. I used to wash my hair. Claire sniffs her hair and looks disgusted. Sarah is back on her phone, distracted. Oh, I don't mean to keep you from your work. Oh, Becky's all right. Perhaps we should get things going. Claire pulls out the novel. You know, we could always do a different night, if that's better. No, no, this is my night. I've got so much to talk about. It'll be a relief to talk about something other than how tired I am or how sore my nipples are. Sorry. Claire starts poking the cabbage back into her top. A few leaves start falling out. I heard that Savoy cabbage helps soothe them. Does it help? Yes, it's the only thing I found that's relieved it. 
You know, I thought it was a joke at first, a bit of Savoy cabbage in the bra, but who would have thought what a relief it could be? They had to restock my corner shop. <laughs> Must have thought I'd adopted a family of rabbits. <laughs> Do you know, I, um, I tried rubbing my nipples with a flannel to toughen them before Lola arrived, but it just, it just really hurt. Breastfeeding did not work for me. And it wasn't easy to stop either. Got my health visitor, right? She was a right breastfeeding Nazi. Rest is best. Fuck off. Sorry. Oh, no, you're right. They make you feel like such a failure, don't they? Like... You're not a real mum if you can't manage to do the most natural thing in the world. Some mums can be like that too. Do you know, I don't hang around with anyone who makes me feel shit about my ability to be a parent. Good idea. Enough about nipples. <laughs> Let's talk about the book. I can't wait to hear what you thought. About the book. It is book club, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you think we have time now? Oh, if we get things going now, I think we should make it. We could just start with our favourite bits, if you like. I, I actually might lie down, actually, if that's right with you. Claire lies down on the sofa. I um, really loved the main character. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, she, um, she really reflected the author's mindset of being an awakened and progressive woman fighting against the patriarchy. I, I loved the contrast with the other woman, the one who, you know, died. Um, mm -hmm. A symbol of white Western beauty and fertility, romanticized and adored by men, but also an emotional punch bag for their tempers and demands. She had to suppress herself so much that she actually ended up being an instrument of male discourse hegemony. Sarah looks up to see that Claire has fallen asleep. She creeps up and out towards the toilet, tries to get Claire's arm, but thinks better of it and heads off. Claire snores lightly. Long pause. We see Becky's head appear and she creeps on, followed by Emma and Sarah. Emma and Becky try to sneak out the front door, but Sarah indicates Claire and mimes that they shouldn't leave her. They eventually agree to go and creep towards the front door. And as they are about to exit, the doorbell rings. Olivia and Joe burst in very loudly and full of conversation. Olivia is tipsy and wears a sophisticated velour onesie carrying two bottles of wine. Jo wears a full face of quite heavy but immaculate makeup. She's in gym gear, backpack, Fitbit, on her front with 10 month old baby Jack inside. I can't believe she showed up to my meditation group. It's not enough that she stole my husband. She's after my mind now too. What's left of it? Shh. Oh, why are you shushing us? Oh, I hate being shushed. Why did you all answer the door together? They all come in and sit down. Emma takes the bottles from Olivia and hides them behind the sofa. Claire wakes up a little bleary eyed. Mm. Oh, hi. You must be Claire. I'm Olivia. Oh, thanks for letting me tag along with all the mums. Hi. Oh, yes. Um, thanks for coming. Sorry, I must have dropped off. Um, what time is it? Jo starts slightly jogging around the room. They all watch her. Claire pours everyone a glass of water and pours one out ready for Jo, then hands them out, followed by the snacks, which they all decline apart from Olivia. Oh, thanks. Mmm, thanks. The night is still young. Oh, sorry we're a bit late. I had to sort Jo out. What happened? I haven't mm. seen her like this since she found Daniel at it with his life coat on Good Friday. Not so Good Friday. Mm. Jo continues jogging round the room, going from power walking to sprinting on the spot. She's very focused. Daniel's latest one turned up tonight at our meditation class. Mm. I'll tell you, there were less ohms and more oh my gods. Oh, poor Jo. It's very difficult to do a healing heart meditation when your ex-husband's new girlfriend shows up. Mm. Who happens to be a former Olympic sportswoman? She's got arms like Serena Williams, for God's sake. Gorgeous. I can hear you, Olivia, and it's only a bronze medal that she got for water polo. Wow, so she actually won an actual Olympic medal? Mm. An actual medal, yes. 
opposed to a virtual one, do you mean? But I mean, water polo is pretty much up there with synchronized swimming and, and it's stupidity, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, just splashing around, Granny. And they wear those stupid nose clips that make them look like a very pissed off pepper pig. They all watch as Joe speeds up. Is she all right? Are you all right? Is that okay for the baby? Oh, don't worry. He always sleeps through it. Claire offers Joe a glass of water and Joe finally stops, out of breath and looking at her Fitbit. Thanks. Thanks. Joe drinks the water straight down. She's a little manic. Oh, is that pure? Was that pure? Um, well, it came out of the tap. <laughs> yes, it was pure, my love. Don't worry. Uh, Emma, where did my bottles go? Oh. Emma? Hit my record for the week. Team amazing. Jo carefully pulls her onesie out of her backpack and puts it on top of her gym oh. gear as they speak, zipping up to keep the baby carrier exposed. Would you like to sit down for a minute? A snack? Are they pure? Um, no. What she means is, are they vegan? Like, do they have animals in them? Oh, yes, I think so. I, I need to check the packet. No, no, don't worry. Uh, could you bring us in some glasses, though, Claire? Glasses? For the wine? Oh, no, I, I was saying to the others earlier, we don't have alcohol in the house during the week. Just a weekend treat, really. Good for you. Team amazing. Booze is basically poison, you know. Well, it is Thursday. Very nearly the weekend. Well, I'd prefer it if we didn't. I did mention it in the invitations. Invitation? Oh, yes. I'm um, sorry. I didn't have your address, so... Um, can I put the little one down for you? What a good baby. Oh, no. No, thanks. I prefer to have him next to me. You know, skin to skin as much as possible. This is Jack. He is quite special. Perhaps I should try that with Alice. <laughs> It's an organic Native American papoose. I'll send you the link. <gasps> Do you know what he did this morning? It's quite amazing, actually. He actually did this little thing with his hand to tell me he wanted more milk. You take him to baby signing, don't you? Yeah, I do, but he's only had one session. He is really quite special, you know. He's very advanced. Claire goes round filling up the water glasses and offering more snacks. Oh, ladies, come on. You know the first rule of book club. We don't talk about our kids, we know, we know. But I had to tell you how amazing Jack is. Gosh, I've been talking about mine all evening. Olivia is just joking, Claire, don't worry. Yes, you want to know. I mean, we just like to forget about all that messy kid stuff at book club. Don't we, ladies? Says the woman with no kids and a maid. She's a housekeeper. Oh, frightfully sorry, Lady Crawley. Of course, a housekeeper. Book Club Press is about getting back our identities outside of motherhood, about connecting with our original inner woman. Watch out, she'll be massaging your aura next. <laughs> I thought Book Club was about reading books. <laughs> I think what Emma means is, <clears throat> what did you do before you had kids? Well, um, before the twins were born, I used to work in HR, so <laughs> just over five years ago now. Did it fulfill you? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I liked the people. I, I, I was a different person then, more confident. Exactly. And I'm sure you found plenty of things to talk about that didn't involve children. Yes, I suppose I did. No, I can't really remember who I was before I had my children. <laughs> oh, I can. Thin. You've got a great figure, Joe. Yeah, for a mum. I have to work so hard at it. It takes so much effort. I'll never be like I was, no matter how many bloody classes I do. Do you really want to look like you looked in your 20s now? Yes. 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 Well, I don't. I, I love the way my body's changed, evolved. It tells the story of my babies. Every little wobbly bit, every little stretch mark and scar. That's one of my babies. No. I've got a big smile-shaped scar right across my tummy from the twins. I've always been so self-conscious about it, but when you look at it like that... 
people still keep asking me when my baby's due though, and it really gets my blood boiling. <laughs> well, I still look pregnant, I suppose. Oh, no, it's very kind, but I know I do. No, I was on the tube the other day without Alice and the boys, which is rare, and um, a girl actually offered me her seat. Oh, I get that all the time. Take the seat, I say. It's their own bloody fault. Make them stand up. People just don't think sometimes, do they? Do you know, I actually really like my wobbly bits when they arrived. I really, really like the boobs. I think being as skinny mini all my life, a few curves are really nice. I sort of felt softer, more central. I wish I could look at my thighs like that. I look at my body and I'm happy that it's strong. Yes, my thighs might be better suited to wearing elastic jeans that come up round my boobs now, but so what? My thighs are strong. They help me to run and play with my kids. My feet got bigger too, which was weird. And nobody warns you about your down below bits either, do they? My vag was like a train wreck. I went for a Brazilian about three weeks after Jack was born, you know, just to feel a bit normal again. She waxed it all off. Then, as I was paying, she patted my shoulder and whispered, you've still got a lot of healing to do down there. Oh, Joe, too much. I don't think I'll ever be the same. They don't warn you. Well, not before it's too late, anyway. By the time I'd seen the first stages of labour leaflet, it was too late to go back. That photograph of the giant baby head coming out of that woman's tiny vagina will haunt me forever. Yes, I think I saw the same leaflet. Very graphic. Yes, I know the one you mean. They show the before and after picture, didn't they? <clears throat> I mean, no wonder things change down there afterwards. But nobody talks about it or explains it, really. They just show you the picture of that poor woman and hope that'll do. <sighs> yeah, I always felt a bit sorry for that woman. As if that giant baby coming out of her wasn't enough, some bastard took a photograph of her as it was happening. You could kind of see the hate in her eyes. Yeah, they should put that photo on condoms or pregnancy tests, you know, just to warn people. Yes, like they do with cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved being pregnant though. And the attention everyone spoke to me when I was pregnant. Everyone. Oh, one time in your life when you can eat what you want and you don't have to breathe in. If you never have an empty stomach, you'll never feel sick. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I used to wake up in the morning and get a rush of excitement remembering I was pregnant. Like a kid on Christmas morning. Right. Have you all forgotten the first rule of book club again? Yeah, all right, Brad Pitt. You were talking about being pregnant. Different thing. You haven't got any children, I take it. No, not yet. Although I have been told that just because I don't like other people's children, it doesn't mean to say I won't like my own. Oh, I don't know. I don't like mine all that often, little shits. Have you ever thought about... No, I had my eggs frozen in my 20s. So I get to get to choose when and with who. Uh, with whom. Wow. <laughs> I've never met anyone who's done that. It sounds very sensible to me. Expensive. <laughs> well, what else was I supposed to do with all that money? Well, I hope we haven't put you off with all of that. <laughs> Have you found anyone you think might be suitable for, for your eggs, I mean? No, not yet, no. But I'm having a great time doing my research. Is that what you're calling it now? Mm, yeah, I love research. <laughs> I went on a second date last weekend and the fella said, you don't want to leave it too long to settle down, babe. Oh, no third day, I take it. Absolutely not. I said, I'll be the judge of that, babe. He looked him in the third eye and Nama stayed out of there. Mm -hmm. I hate that phrase, settling down. It implies that you're settling for something. Well, not me. But to be fair, it was the first time he called me, babe. First and last. <laughs> yep, I got a home in time for Dragon's Den. And we all know there's nothing I like more than a Malbec-infused perv over Peter Joe. <laughs> Have you got any more dates coming up? I love hearing your dating stories. <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel like I can live my non-existent social life through you. <laughs> oh, and Sarah's dating him now, aren't you, babe? Yeah. Girls. Well, that's Good great. For you.
Mm. Fair enough. Um, any good ones? Yeah, a few. I was thinking I might take a little break from the old dating. It's, a, it's like a full time job keeping up with all that swiping and small talk. <laughs> Work is a bit full on at the moment. Anyway, and I need to focus. Who knows? I might even decide to go it alone when the time is right. Sorry. But when you start dating again, you have to send us updates, okay? Yeah, your dating stories are pretty much how we get through rugby pods on a Sunday. Talk about getting through. What's all this with no booze? We don't need it. No, I know we don't need it, but... Yeah. Becky throws the sippy cup over to Olivia. What's this? I hope you've sterilised that. Of course I haven't. Taste it. Mm. Oh, is it red or white? Ooh. Oh, it's white. Very white. Oh, save some for us. That's quality Pinot. Oh, can't we just get some wine glasses? Come on, she's already said no booze. Give the poor woman a break. No, no, that's not fair. It's Claire's house. We need to respect her rules. Look, there's only one rule in book club, and she's broken it about 20 times tonight. You all have. Next month, I'm hosting, and you can all respect my rules. No kids, plenty of wine, and no quinoa bloody crisps. Claire enters on the last line unseen. Olivia takes a large sip of the sippy cup, tipping it upside down. We see Claire and she throws the cup at Becky. They both pull out a few sips, uh, they both pull out a few leaves of Savoy cabbage from the sofa and look confused. Becky then realises what they must be for, but Olivia looks disgusted. Claire edges into view. She looks upset. Um, perhaps we should call it a night, um, we can do this another time when things aren't quite so... Yeah, yeah, good idea, if you're sure. What? Oh, no! It's book club! Nothing gets in the way of book club! Are you okay, Claire? Claire sits down. She has more stains on her top. Look, don't be upset. I, for one, actually like quinoa crisps. They're a much healthier alternative. <laughs> it's not the crisps! Oh, Claire, come on, love. You're all right. They all gather round Claire. Becky has her arm around her. What is it? What's wrong? I just don't know if I can do this. I'm such a terrible mother. No, you're not. You're not. Alice just doesn't sleep. I feel like a walking zombie. Of course you do. It gets better. No, I was out with her this morning. We went to the library and literally every other mother walking toward me with a buggy felt like the enemy. They seemed so together and smiley and winning at it all. It felt like such a fraud, like I was doing everything wrong. None of those other women know what they're doing either, you know? I mean, none of us know what the fuck we're doing most of the time, but we're just, I don't know, we're just doing our best, right, aren't we? Oh God, yeah. They may look like they have their shit together, but they all go home thinking everyone else is doing it better. Crying into the fridge at 3 a.m. with baby sick in the hair. Do they? I definitely wasn't the laid back hippie mum I thought I'd be. I had big plans for making my own baby food and doing broga. Broga? Baby yoga. None of that happened. I feed them whatever they don't throw at the wall that day. and. Sometimes, well often actually, they watch the iPad all afternoon. <laughs> Whatever works. I think I lost my sense of humour about a month before I had Jack. Really? Well, you seem to have it pretty together. You know, team amazing. Yeah, you always look like, like you're so organised with it all and you always look so good while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, your Facebook looks like my dream life. Gorgeous, all the time. And your kids, all clean and gorgeous, like the white company catalogue. Yeah, 
and you're always going to fabulous places. With that vegan cafe you were at the other day, it looked fantastic. In fact, I must get the address from you, actually. What? Oh, that. That wasn't real. I mean, it is real. It does exist. I just didn't actually go there. I just posted a photo to make it look like I was there. Oh. Well, that's what you will see, isn't it? Well, I don't mind telling you all, I, when Daniel left, I just, I had to see my doctor. It was too much. I had postnatal depression. Oh, Joe, well, you never told us. Well, no, it's not the easiest thing to talk about. It's overwhelming having a little human who's so reliant on you and being stuck with an enormous fear that something bad will happen to them if you're not there. Feeling like you're doing it all wrong. I know what you mean. When I look back now, I think I would have been much happier not having children. I know that's not what you're supposed to say, but... But what I do know is, you must surround yourself with good people. Good people like you gorgeous ladies. <laughs> right, love. So you can always hang around with us old book club ladies to make yourself feel better. We're all so terrible mothers sometimes. More often than not, I'd say. Right. May I just point out... We know, we're talking about babies again. Okay, okay. Can I suggest that we talk about what we actually came here to talk about now? The new heated clothes rack that Sarah with the chin has got. Oh my God, have you seen it? It's beautiful. <laughs> Where is she anyway? No, books. The book, the book club book for this month. That is, after all, why we're all here. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, I mean, we never read. We never read anything by rubbish authors, do we? I know Claire's been really looking forward to hearing our thoughts about it. We had a fabulous discussion about misogyny earlier. Well, until I fell asleep. <laughs> Sorry about that. I mean, I wasn't bored. What you were saying was fascinating. Well, Becky, why don't you go first? Kick us off with your favourite theme. Um, right. Thanks, Sarah. I didn't think you read the book club book. Yeah, just blogs and blogs, really. Well, yeah. I've discovered this amazing thing called an e-reader. Great for when Lola's gone to sleep. Well, good for you. So, what was your favourite bit? Um, I'd say the windmill. Windmill? Yeah, I, I don't remember there being a windmill. I think what you mean is the symbolism of the main character's um, emotions. Yeah, they, they were turning like a windmill. What did you think of the ending, Olivia? Oh, what, me? Oh, no, I, I'd really like to hear what Joe thought of the ending before I give my opinion, uh, because we often have a similar take on it. Yeah, good plan. Well, I thought it was really... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can all relax. I know none of us have read it. Well, apart from Sarah. What? You knew? <laughs> oh, thank God. None of us. Like, none of you. <laughs> so you just... I have twin boys and a newborn. How on earth do you think I'd have the time? I hardly have time to do number two most days. <laughs> That's what we thought, but... I was really looking forward to the games. I thought book club meant reading books and I wanted you all to like me. I did intend to read it every time Alice fell asleep, but then Dad drop off too. We do like you, you silly cow. Ooh. <laughs> That's Becky being nice, don't worry. She has to end every compliment with an insult so it doesn't get totes emotion. Oh, good. I like you too, Becky. All of you, you, you silly... Bastards! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you'll come back next month, will you, Claire? It's my turn to host. 
Yes, I'd love to. So I don't need to read the book. God, no. Only if you want to. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> I'll get you started with the Chins Minions onesie. Lovely. Thanks. <laughs> um, did I see some wine hidden behind the sofa there, Olivia? Claire stands and goes to leave towards the kitchen. Um, uh, yes? Well, crack it open, will you? I'll go and get some glasses and a corkscrew. Oh, hurrah! It's a screw top, actually. Only the best for book club. Woo -woo. Yay! Why, <laughs> at last! 